voice for his name. I need this man to live long and prosper for a very long time. The first recipient of the miracle tonight is the pastor of the church and the presiding prelate of the grand old church of God in Christ worldwide. Amen. What is your aunt's name? Gloria? Gloria Conyers. I'm so confused. How old is she? Maybe. Because the Lord just told me to tell whoever Gloria is, I'm giving her a 12 year extension. Wait a minute. That's, do you have a driver's license? Because you took up for your aunt, God said tell you, go look at another new car because he's about to give it to you and it has your name on it only. Are y'all jealous? Or you, Somebody's coming to praise God with you. That's your mom. Oh, okay. I just told y'all tonight, this is a group service. God has been fully interviewing you to get your money up. Because you work hard. You want a business. You seem to be doing things. But the money seems to be stuck for three years. But God said after 12 midnight tonight, I will open up the window of heaven. Oh, that's the noise I want to hear. And pour you out a blessing. You may be seated. You can get up and down on your own, but the more you move, the closer you're going to get anyway. Somebody's being blessed long distance because they need a financial miracle, something concerning ministry. Your name is Titus Jackson. Now I'm looking online. Get a, get a close-up on me. I don't know when you're doing it. Point to me. I need... Not just Titus Jackson, who is Melanie? Melanie is online. Whoever's looking online, look for or make her respond. Her name is Melanie uh, uh, Chandler. Some people call her Morton. Look online. When you get it, wave at me. Don't take long. I'm putting your eyes to work. Need two sets of eyes. Young man in the back touching your shirt. Run out to the center aisle. Because I thought you would be working. What is your age? What is your name? Because the Lord says, when I was trying to find uh, Titus Jackson, Melanie Morton Chandler, the Lord said, tell him all of the misfortunes that happened to his family that could have caused him his life, death, or something else. God says, as of the next five minutes, you are about to enter the best years of your life. And God said, everything in your past is erased. And somebody with a loud mouth and happy hands. God said, in private prayers, you were like, I don't know where my life is going. But God says, I'm putting you on the right road. I need you to stay very connected to this ministry. There's safety in here for you. Safety. I want to say this, and I don't think you'll get embarrassed, but my gift sometimes gets personal. And then I want people to scream for him in a healthy way. 
God said anything the devil was trying with you that was going to turn into addiction just got destroyed. There will be. That's not loud enough for me. You may be seated. Did y'all find Melanie? Who's working with me back there? Melanie, write in the comment section so the light-skinned girl looking at it can see you. To the light-skinned sister that's looking, stand on your feet. I don't know how I can see with my glasses off. This is a miracle already. What is your age? Say it loud. Because I couldn't see you. I just said what the Lord said. But when you stood up, I saw a number over your head. You may not want it. When I call the number, there'll be 30 of us who don't mind screaming for you. God says, tell her she can revisit and think. And if she wants to go to school the right way, I'm releasing $51,000 that she was neglected. Why y'all not happy as you should be? Be seated. We're almost ready. I want you to look at your neighbor and say these two words to them. If they don't get happy, don't talk to them for three minutes straight. And I mean it. You taking it as a joke, but the prophet is very serious. Look to the left and right and just shout, you're next. <laughs> seated thank you Jesus behind you stand up for me full name as it would appear on a building if God was naming a building after you how would you want the initials to look on a property if the building was named after you. CLS and a slightly slanted font. Believe it or not, you're not going to believe me, but God says, tell him, I'm going to work the most unusual deal to make someone who wants to sell a property for 12 million, offer him a deal for him to put lease businesses in his building. See what? LS with a slightly slanted font. When I have you walk on, hallelujah. Now the Lord says he's gonna need a whole floor for his businesses alone. One of them is like to mentor future millionaires. One of those floors. God says he's deputizing you and anointing you to equip the next generation. He says you're making moves that are turning into gold, but tell him I need him to share what I've given him with the next generation to come. He says I'm no longer just anointing preachers, I'm anointing entrepreneurs that will secure the ministry of every church. Are y'all quiet or happy? So when this multi-multi-millionaire walks across the stage, I want to hear you yell, do it now as if it's your graduation.
I'm going to tell you what I told him. It's risky. If you do the will of God and do it from your heart, God said you're going to do something for him that no one can even argue about or go off because it wasn't from them. God says in you is the power because of his body to find the jet that he would be flying on because you have a desire. I don't hear nobody. And some of y'all extremely quiet. I can't believe that two of your own people jealous up here over that prophecy. I would want my bishop to have one. I don't see too many other people's presiding prelates flying. That's not humility. Humility is when you wait your turn. He waited. You prayed this morning, right? What is your name? Tiffany Lewis, I enjoyed your prayer this morning. You even prayed for me and you saw the prayer answered. Lord, we need a word. We need a real word. Then I lifted my hands because people get used to routine prayer. I listen to prayer. All right. And I could hear God honoring your prayers. I have to say something. You're going to think I'm a half false prophet. I don't mind, but I'm not a whole false prophet. When I say this, certain women will scream for you based on your behavior. This morning, I saw, let me finish, a brand new brick house, right? For you. I then could not get happy because I didn't understand why would you just show me a house. Tonight, the Lord said, tell her this, and it's up to her to interpret it. Love will be better the second time around. And that opportunity is right around the corner. You may be seated. But I told you, if I spoke the word of the Lord to you and you didn't respond right, you missed it by forfeit. You were the man who did the offering. Can I hold your right hand? I want to speak healing. Because you're a few months from the ICU, but God said, if I got anything. You shouldn't be alive. Let me tell you, God has new kidneys. You've got a transplant put in you now? I told a man in, I'm sorry, North Carolina, can't remember what part we were in, in Raleigh. He stood up, I said, you got bad news that you're dying again. You just received a new kidney and now it's failing. I said, by midnight tonight, God will regenerate that kidney. He went to the doctor, he hit me two days later. He said, playing around, baby, I got a new kidney. I want a Bahashia Kotaya. Were you here this morning? When I said some folk need a miracle, but others are a miracle, yeah. you don't need one. Yes, you are the miracle. Someone stand behind him. I don't lay hands much. When I lay hands on my brother, you that know what a Shabbat is, do it now in the name of Jesus.
Be seated. Give me a few moments. We'll be back. Hallelujah. Whether I called you out by word of knowledge, wisdom, or prophecy, if you know you're on God's list or on his to-do list, jump up on your own and give God praise for yourself. Some of you going to miss it by forfeit. You may be seated. I prophesied, Bishop, that God, or I revealed to the audience and to those watching by way of social media tonight, that God has ordered me to assist him in activating over 20 millionaires. God does not highlight money over salvation I'm going to talk to talkers but it is time for saved folk to get paid the days of us relying on other people y'all don't like it to do for us what they will later hold over our heads look at someone tell them that day is over God wants to bless some of you to receive this unusual wealth because you also have an unusual heart to be a blessing. I'm going to preach to you talk. And the proof that it's you is you've been helping people while you couldn't help yourself. See, some of y'all got too much money. But I remember when God would tell me, bless somebody else, and I was blessing them with the rent money I didn't have. Want to start off with a story. Be seated. When you catch it, then you can talk. 1993. I know people ain't used to folk preaching like this. Just stop and tell a story. But let me tell a story. 1993. I had gotten invited to a church to preach by mistake. by mistake and they invited Dr. Todd Hall to come preach at a church called Free Gospel Deliverance Church 4203 Marlboro Pike in Coral Hills, Maryland 301-420-9300 was their phone number and when I got off the flight there was a 120 foot stretch limousine with a person holding a card saying Dr. Todd Hall and I walked over there and they looked at me like I was strange. Now some of you don't like stories because you don't have one. See for some of you things were given to you. For some of us we had to wait in line. See, that's why I'm talking over here. I got a young man in the second row saying, talk about it. They drove me to the meeting place. I met the bishop at the time, Apostle Ralphie Green. He came out. He's fully apostolic. He said, praise the Lord. And I said, praise the Lord. Who are you? I said, I'm Dr. Todd Hall. We're looking for the white prophet Todd Hall. Now, my story can be rectified because that church is still erected. J.J. Harrison is now the pastor of that building. 
All my stuff can be traced. I said, well, you stuck with me. He said, well, being that you're here, tell me a little bit about yourself. We're going to have you for one night. And we're going to put you on the same plane that brought you here. Are you saved? You love the Lord? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three hours later, Dr. Dorinda, because you're my friend, he calls me to verify the rumors he heard within three hours. See, y'all gonna miss it. Because once God's about to bless you, mess pops up from everywhere. I just want to preach to people. There's no elevation without a situation. Would you tell your neighbor that? And I answered yes to every rumor. So you admit it? I said, yes, sir. He said, now I'm going to give you this night anyway, even though what I heard should have made me cancel you. He said, but for some reason I hear the Lord say, if he tell you the truth, let him preach. Preach that night. I don't sense. That one night went to 31 days. 1993. 4203 Marlboro Pike in Coral Hills, Maryland. 301-420-9300. Thirty-one days. I was renting my house in Florida. I was facing eviction, not foreclosure, because I was renting. Oh yeah. I can't get no support, but I'm gonna preach anyway. The man gave me my honorarium on day thirty-one, and when you're broke, black people go straight to the bank. They don't do lunch. All right, y'all don't remember? Friday when you got paid, you went straight to the bank. I went to First Union Bank back then, which later became Wachovia, which is now Wells Fargo. I went there. Why is he testifying and not preaching? You're going to find out. Went to the bank, signed the back of the check. Looking for a certain amount because I knew what my honorarium was per day. They said, excuse me, sir, you have to wait two hours. Now, when you're broken black, y'all won't even smile up here. Y'all stuck in your Pentecostal suit. When you're broken black, you be like, y'all don't have no money. You a bank. He said, we know Bishop Ralphie Green, but, it, but we just called him. It's going to take two hours. I said, my flight leaves in an hour. They said, well, you either miss your flight and stay for your money, or you go and trust us, and we got a first union close to you. But when you broke, mm-mm. <laughs> See, I, still, I need cash in hand. Y'all are proving to me that all y'all got money. All y'all. Well, I waited. Y'all missing that prophecy. I waited. Y'all missing it. All of you that's been waiting, you're about to get it. But I waited. No, no, you ain't got to talk. And if I waited that long on man... Why would I complain about how long I'm waiting on God? Maybe you got another flight to catch. They brought my money. I looked at it. I got nervous. So I called Bishop at his used to be number 301-627-1777. He said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now, when you're broke and somebody makes a mistake on your check and it's better for you, you don't call. So I didn't want to call. Because the mistake was in my favor. All right, y'all, I just prophesied again. I told you, as I'm talking, you got to catch it. 
I said, Bishop, I want to be honest. I think your office made a drastic mistake. You promised me this amount, but they gave me this amount. He said, well, let me tell you something. <clears throat> he said, uh, I told the Lord, if this is a true prophet and man of God, that I'm going to write a different amount on the check and see if he's in it for the money or if he loved people. He said, then I told the Lord, y'all going to miss it. If he's in it for the people, I'm going to let him keep all the money. And from those that are not jealous who are walking with me, from that amount in 93, I paid off the house I was renting in 93. Y'all missing it. Money didn't pay my bill. Now, I live in another one now I'm paying for. But that one was paid off by waiting and being honest. And for the real screamers, it came while the rumors were out on me. When God wants to bless you, he'll plow through your mess to get to that thing. Look at two or three people, tell them, can nothing stop what's coming for me. All right, be seated. Second story, then I'm ready. The reason why I'm telling this story to talkers is some of us would never get what God promises if we have to measure up. Let me go on and talk to three of you. Some of the folk that y'all see getting blessed, they got hit and mess too. Bishop, I'm glad that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, blood washed. But we're in the day now, I was telling one of my vice, I said, I don't understand how many pastors that are renowned and prominent are sitting themselves down over something that can come out 20 something years ago. See, y'all not talking, let me go back. One of them 32 years ago. One of them 22 years ago. I told the church where I pastor for three of you who are staying, I said, if I mess up tomorrow, I ain't leaving. How can the God in me forgive you for all the wrong you do and when I mess up, you won't forgive me? I am not leaving. Look how quiet it just got up in here. It's time for preachers to stop lying. It's time for everybody to stop lying. Ain't no special heaven for preachers. And hell ain't hotter for lying preachers. That was the only time I got a miracle and Bishop Green said to me, Welcome to the new broke. I didn't know what that man meant. Like y'all looking at me. I said, new broke. He said, when you came here to preach, it was by default. That was not of your appointment, but it became your assignment. Oh, yeah. He said, you got something that you were not scheduled to receive, but that God put in your path. He said, now that you have it, I want you to let the same man be in himself prophesy to you what to do with it. I said, okay. He says, I want you to take every dime I gave you that you were not supposed to get and pay the house off where you're living that you were late for rent. I did it. It was the exact amount minus $10. I had $10 left over. He said, now you can at least tell the devil, I may not have no money. Oh, y'all didn't catch it. I want to prophesy to 200 who will jump up. All of you that have no money, you still going to get what God has for you. I want you to believe me. And God's going to bless some of us to have enough money to fund some of your ideas. My last story, I got frustrated in 95, watching a group of, which they called me one also, false prophets start to rise up 
and they were buying airplanes and jets. See, no help. Because some of y'all ain't talking to me now because you judge a prophet by how strong their gifts are. But some of these folk coming from foreign lands prophesying it's not the Holy Ghost, it's a deal with the devil. See, you didn't want to hear that. That's why even when they prophesy, you be something ain't right. Some just feel strange because you got the Holy Ghost and they got the Holy Goat. So do you. And sometimes you got to let the spirit of God. All right, let me talk to you. I got upset. So I told the Lord, Lord, if you bless me with some money, then I can worship you well because you know I'll give. I'll, I'll do everything I tell you. I pay my tithe. The Lord did not answer me. I went to sleep. I'm not a dreamer, but every now and then I have dreams. And I had a dream, and I think I'm going to run now because I'm excited. I had a dream in 95 that I was in my own dream looking, hearing the voice of God, seeing the clouds roll away, and I can't give names. And another person was in my dream that I don't know how he got in my dream. And God is talking to me audibly like he does sometime about you all. He says, are you ready for your money? I said, I sure am. I said, yeah. Then he said, look at the person to your right. And I did. He said, can I give him his first? I said, who dream is this? See, y'all laughing. I'm, I'm like, is this my dream or his? He said, it's yours. He's not talking. He said, do you mind if I give him his money first? In my head, in my dream, I was saying, I want mine's first. I'm sorry y'all are bored tonight. The Lord said, Todd, I'm waiting on you to answer. I said, Lord, your will, let him have his. The heavens opened. All type of dollars falling out of heaven. I'm getting frustrated in my own dream watching another person get blessed. Oh, y'all are quiet. Especially someone blessed that ain't talking. In my dream, I'm praying some of that money, come on over here. Money went to his ankles. This my hand to God, the man still living today. Money went to his knees. And I'm held hostage in my own dream, watching someone else get what I want. Money to his waist. Money to his shoulders. Money up to his neck. And God said, are you happy for him? No, I couldn't lie at first. I, no, I didn't say that. I wasn't happy right away. I had to become spiritual in my own dream. Because as Todd, a man waiting, I didn't understand why you would put me in my dream to watch someone else that ain't talking to you and you ain't talking to them, get all this money. He got his money. I changed my heart in my dream and I said, I'm happy for him. God said, now are you ready for yours? I said, yes, I am. Heaven opened, the Lord said, I'm going to give you the same thing I gave him. I said, come on, Lord. Nickels, dimes, and quarters started falling from heaven. It was hurting me to get wealthy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, y'all didn't. Oh, everybody. Everything God was sending me came with a little pain. But he told me, you better not move. 
nickels, dimes, quarters, up to my ankles. Nickels, dimes, pennies, quarters, up to my knees. Nickels, dimes, penny, quarters. Lord, I wish they can hear their own prophets. Up to my waist. Everything that's accumulating is coming with pain. Uh oh, I just prophesied to 60% of you and you don't know it. Pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters. Up to my shoulders. Up to my neck. The Lord said, are you happy? I said, I'm happy, but I'm hurting. What this particular preacher, I'm glad I didn't say his name, was covered in was cash. I'm going to see who screams. What I was captivated, captured in was change. Some of you can't get the cash until you accept. The second difference that I'm going to read this scripture is he could move in his cash. I was held hostage to the change. Could move to the left and right because of what the change was made out of. The Lord said, last thing I want to show you and I'm going to see if my 20 future millionaires will catch it and jump for yourself. It could be more based on your behavior. He then called the angel and said, bring two matches. Light the matches. Throw the same situation in both of their directions. At that time in my dream, I was happy that I let someone else go first. I've watched that particular man be consumed by the cash. I've watched him try to blow the fire out. I've watched him beg for mercy. And I said, that should have been me. When the match hit my pennies, nickel, diamond, quarter, I just looked at it. Because my miracle was made out of something that could not consume me. I say this for 200 of you and you that are online that will praise God in the lower thirds. And I mean for 30 seconds, no music, no dancing, your praise has to be authentic. God says, by the end of the day, when I start your season, it's coming with no pain. No problems because you made it through the change. Yell it. You made it through change. Be seated. God. Yeah, he's talking again. Well, well. Bishop, my hand to God, I've never been consumed by money. I've never let anybody use me. And when I do, it was because I knew in the future they would need me. God is preparing, here I am, I was about to read, a table for most of you in the very presence of your enemies. Let me talk to talkers. Your cup is about to run over. Surely goodness and mercy is about to follow some of you all the days of your life. Now that you heard that, give me 25 minutes to secure this with something that will shock you. 
because I want to first open up with my 24 who keep talking to me by prophecy comes with pain. Prophecy sounds good, but when it starts producing what it speaks, pain is a part of it. Your prophecy is about to come to pass if you ever felt this emotion. Lord, I don't want no more prophecies because every time I get one, something bad happens. When you start becoming, y'all quiet, prophetically phobic. Because after every good announcement, something bad occurs. That's God setting you up for more than you could imagine. High five somebody and tell them I have no regrets. I was, I guess I got to do it with you. I was looking, I was in my bed resting and your son came before me. That's why I looked over there several times before I read the scripture. And I know he's probably busy. And the Lord showed me something for him. So I'm going to say it. Kiara can tell it to him, whoever. But I need 50 of y'all to go crazy. I saw like a strip mall property. In each building, he had a business. In every last one. One was a music school for up and coming musicians. The other one was a studio. The third one was a real estate agency. And the fourth one was his for whatever it was for. It was a two story strip mall. The Lord says, I'm giving him this not just because of his daddy, I'm giving him this as what he would have received from his grandfather. This is a prayer unanswered. Y'all ain't talking. He's going to take care of the marketing ministry. He's going to have favor with man and God. The Lord said, don't try to change him. The change is already taking place. But the Lord said for three of you who will scream, he's one of the 20 multi-millionaires in the church. And I want to say this, be seated. Prophecy, when it's real, takes you backwards before it takes you forward. I'm about 15 minutes from hollering. I said it makes you look like you're going backwards before you go forward. We still got two or three people here from this morning that still look like this. I don't know how they think they're going to get a prophecy or a husband looking like that, but let me stay here. And you sit in two rows from where you were this morning. Now let me come back. So first Kings, right? I told you, if you don't get it, you didn't get it by default. You've got to do something to get something. First Kings chapter 17 verses 8 through 16. If I can preach it the way an old bishop would preach it, then I'm going to do it for the saving of time because I know I'm still prophesying. But 30 of you push me. You read it when you get home for your leisure. But it's a story about a woman from Zarephath. It's a story for my 20 folk who will talk about a woman who God is speaking about but not speaking to. Oh yeah. I can't wait till the Lord talk to me. He don't need to talk to you. He has to speak to who's going to help you get what you need. So when he's quiet to you, he's loud to someone else. Come on, help somebody. Tell them God's putting your name in the right ears. Young man that plays the organ with the cool glasses on, sitting there, chilling out. I'm going to have you walk down the steps. If you want to run, I need you to run because God said there's a three-bedroom waiting on you right now.
And the Lord said to tell him when he walks in, this does not need a salary increase. It's already done. Be story. Be seated. Go ahead. This is about a woman in Zarephath. God is not speaking to her, but he's talking about her. I think I should say this for someone in the pulpit. If preachers jump or praise, maybe they don't know more, but I do. 30 of you catch this. When God mentions your name, Satan gets an opportunity. Y'all missed it. When God mentions Job, then Satan comes. And God said, have you considered him? You only want him because he's important enough for me to talk about him. And some of y'all have been attacked in the past few years because God keeps throwing your name in the atmosphere. Satan only wants who God speaks well of. Don't make me preach it, Bishop. I hear you. You're being attacked because God is doing a bunch of this. And what he's basically saying for folk is if they make it through this, I'm going to give them more than they requested. And you that are quiet, please be seated. Because you've already lost it by default. The Bible lets us know that she has a son. The Bible also lets us know, brother preachers, that she has no man taking care of her. It is her and her son. The Bible also lets us know, for the congregation who will talk, that she's supposedly making her last meal. She interprets her season to say to her, we're going to eat and die. Let me talk to talkers. I refuse to eat and die. If you know anything about the penal system, when you're on death row, they let you ask for your last meal. Going to have your best meal on your worst day. While she's in a famine, God is speaking to a prophet. Go to Detroit and tell them in the midst of a famine, get ready to eat. Good God right now. Not eat and die. But eat and live. Look at somebody, tell them I got a plus one on my invite. When God tells the prophet Elijah, go to Zarephath, for I have commanded a widow woman to take care of you. God does not tell the woman he's coming and does not tell him her condition. All right, I can't get it. Because if he would have told both of them, they both would have ran because there's no way I'm going to take food out of a woman and a child's mouth. And there's no way she should let a stranger come eat what she should be given to her child. Y'all ain't going to dance on this, but I am. You know God is about to bless you because he left out several parts of your story. If you'd have known a good prophecy was going to give you a year of bad situations, you'd have told God, keep that word. I'm good. He tells, there he goes again, the prophet, go to this address like he gives me names, numbers, go there. 
She's right now in the midst of preparing your meal. He gets there. It looks like what God said. And because it looked like it for 10 of you, he made a request. Bake me a cake. Oh yeah. I want some water. She then looks at him and had women and said, you must be kidding. This is for me and my son. Real women don't feed their boyfriends before their children. I'll be back in a minute. I wish that real mothers will take care of their children before they take care of themselves. I couldn't come over there because y'all got quiet on that boyfriend thing. Y'all still my homies. be treating these boyfriends let him eat and you just get a sandwich no let him get a sandwich I'm gonna see you scream you take care of what you carry and the reason why God has not blessed some of you to be wealthy yet is you're taking care of what can't take care of you once you shift your priorities and know what is more important versus what's more exciting. She looked at him. I'm about to preach, Bishop. She wasn't being rude. She said, as the Lord your God lives. I don't have a cake. I'm sorry that I'm doing the Bible study. She makes it very clear for my 10 millionaires that I don't serve your God. So God's about to bless you through vehicles that don't even believe in him, but they're under his control. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Let me talk to you, get it happy. God's going to make somebody bless you who refuses to bless you because right now they're under his control. He said, I've commanded her. I've commanded her to bless you. I wanted to preach this, but y'all too tired tonight. Your wish is my command, but that ain't going to work. Somebody else can use it. That's not going to work. I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. When he gets there, he asks for the easiest thing you think first. You think this is the easiest thing. After the next two deep things, then we'll smooth out and we'll fly and you can unloose your belt and feel free to go to the lavatory on my flight. But hear me very quickly. Hey, they, they, they. No, when you experience turbulence, they ask you, please remain seated and keep your seat belts fastened. And when we get to a smoother altitude, y'all, it ain't smooth right now. A little too turbulent for some of you. But here is the support. The wealth of the wicked has been laid up for the righteous or the just. The church right now is not postured to bless each other financially. But God's about to hop on the secular world. And he's about to bless all of you that were painfully helping people when you could not help yourself. And there's some real dogmatic sanctified folk in here. I don't touch dirty money. Give it to me. I'll show you what to do with it. See, I can't get help. It's only dirty because whose hands it was in. Look up to God with power and shout, I'll take it. I'll take it. What you talking about? You'll take it. You ain't screaming. He said, and you will live in houses you have not built. And eat out of fields where you have not tilled nor strawed, which means God's about to bless some of you without labor. I'm trying to tell you, he's taking the pain out of the prophecy and you're missing it. 
Bishop, don't make me preach like that. He asked for something you think was easy. He said, fetch me some water. Fetch me kashia tabahu. Fetch me, thank you Jesus, fetch me some water. When she was going for the water, she didn't mind. He then said, and bake me a cake also. She turned around on the second request. Let me say the happy part, then the deeper part. And to you that get louder, you're going to thank God I came here today. Catch this. God says, uh, when I tell you to ask me for something, ask for all of it. Don't ask for part. If you're going to say, Lord, I want to get married, tell him I need a house. We need a job. Just keep, don't let him get out of your company without asking for all of it. You can get married and he have no job. So when God's going to get the husband, tell him, make sure he got a business too. You got to keep asking. I see help back there. Help is back there. Now, Bishop, here is where you can tap me on the shoulder. Then I'll try to transcend and go to some smooth atmosphere. 30 of you catch it with me because I'm going to be one of those guys and that's this. The first thing he asked for was the hardest thing she should have went to get. It was water. You are saying water's free. I need to help 10 of you who will jump up for real and not play. You do know water was expensive because it hadn't rained. Right now, water is expensive. Go to a hotel. Four dollars for an eight ounce bottle of water. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. There was no rain for three and a half years, so anybody that was using water had to pay a high price. So God said, tell the screamers, I'm about to give you what your money can't afford. The only reason why she was going to get him water is she planned on dying the next day. Anybody will give you what they can use. But if they knew that you were going to use it in a way that they didn't know about, they would ask for it back. Uh oh, Bishop going to make me holler. He is. She goes. He then addresses cake. She says to him, I'm about to preach, I am in the process of making my final meal. Wait a minute. She says, I only have a little cruise of oil. They not help me. And a small handful of meal. Everything she has is small. Uh I'm about to give you my topic. I got five of them up there. Everything she sees in her custody is small. She said, I don't have a cake. Ten of you, because it started with 30, went down to 20. The numbers are decreasing because the behavior is decreasing. Ten of you catch this and scream. He basically told her, everything looks small that you have when it's not working together. Uh I'm almost there. I'm gonna prophesy to my entrepreneurs and screamers online and in here. You don't have what it takes to be a millionaire, but you got the ingredients. Oh, she didn't have a cake, but she had the ingredients. Some of you are focusing on too many things separate of each other. Instead of talking to a neighbor, what do you have a little of? And what do I have a little of? Oh, y'all, and if we put it all together, what will rise out of this? 
Y'all crazy, but I'm going to say a line from a movie because God said I'm going to force a miracle on at least 50 of you. He says, and if you ever heard this line and scream, you're about 24 hours away from the beginning. He said, eat the cake, Annie Mae. Eat the cake. Because some of you have lost your appetite. You've lost your desire. You have been beat down to where nothing excites you anymore. God said, hold on. <laughs> Grandma would say, huh, you ain't hungry. Oh, you're going to eat because I went through all I sweated. You've lost your appetite because you didn't eat when you were ready. Mm-hmm. She's in there making her cake. And while she's making, watch it now, her cake, Elijah is in the kitchen probably saying how can someone with so little do so much for me i'll stay here until y'all talk put the volume back like you had it god's about to make your little do much will you tell three people what i just said Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Just like that little lad that gave Jesus all he had. And the multitudes were fed with the fish and the loaves of bread. But what you have may not seem much. But when you yield it to the touch of the master's loving hand, then you'll understand that your life. God's about to do this for ordinary people. The days of the big people are over. God's about to bless the small fries. You were small in finances, but big in spirit. God says, now I got to measure up your heart with what you have. Wait a minute. This ain't in my notes. The Lord just gave me a word that excited me. It's not in my notes. 50 of you scream on this. He said, tell you, when I start making you bless people, it won't hurt you anymore. Most of us have to hurt ourselves to help others. I'm about to close and get to the preach. All of those ingredients had the potential to make cake. Let me talk to the same 50 people who talk back. God is about to take your little and cause you to rise to a place in life where you've never been. And for the screamer, catch this. Like cake, you can't rise till you come out the heat. Some of you are in something that's killing you when it's actually making you rise to the occasion. My topic, which I'm doing it very unusual, and then my subtopic for the screamers, forget 50, 60, anyone who wants to be blessed. The topic is this, and let me explain it, but scream, Beat well. Go to my notes. You will see a line for those who catch it. 2023 and 24 was ordered by God to whip you. Uh -oh. Y'all didn't catch that. When you beat or whip, you take everything that was separate and make them come together. Oh, Y'all yeah. never made a cake? It said beat well. Stir well. Grandma used to take a big bowl. 
with a big spoon. Y'all ain't talking. And she would just flip it until you can no longer see flour. You can no longer see eggs. You can no longer see milk or oil. Everything became one substance. Everything became better. And then it went from better to better. Oh, y'all ain't. And it was so good that before it was cake, we used to fight over the bowl and the spoon. Oh, y'all, y'all. God said, tonight, they got to praise me for the batter. Because if the batter is good, the better is right around the corner. Good God Almighty. You anticipated the cake. And some of us were so creative, like me. About 10 of you were creative who would scream that you would take the bowl and make pictures. See, y'all don't remember. I used to make hearts in there and write, I love grandma. And then I licked my fingers and my grandma said, you gonna share it? Mm-mm. And then we fight over the spoon. Look at this lost generation of Z's and Alphas. Y'all used to do that? Yes. What it was called for screamers was a preview. What is called in the song is a foretaste. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Oh, taste. You don't see the cake while you're eating the mix, but you can taste what the cake is going to taste like. Before 24 is over, you're going to get a whole slice of 25. Somebody didn't catch what I said. You're not going to wait till next year to eat next year. God said, some of you, I want to test your taste and give you what's coming out next year right now. In two minutes, push me. She stirs up the cake. She has two sticks. She's rubbing like the Boy Scouts. Let her scream. Those two sticks together. I must say this from a business aspect for 300 of you who will scream. Who you rub shoulders with after today will determine what you bake. You don't need their money tonight. You need them to agree. Grab somebody if they look friend, tell them what's coming is better than what's been. And even when Elijah was ready to give up. There are times when leaders feel like giving up. Talk to me, church. Elijah in private said, it is enough. I'm done. I'm prophetically drained. Everybody getting it but me. Not jealous, but I'm just concerned at how you're using me to be a blessing to everybody else. And you have not found people who would be a blessing to me. I'm there when everybody needs me. Who's there when I need them? Elijah was ready to give up. Went to sleep that night. Told God kill him. God did not honor his prayer. Instead for 30 folk who would scream. God while he was asleep. Baked him a cake. And God, I don't know what type of ingredients he used, but anything that God's hand is in is going to turn out right. Just grab, be careful, somebody and tell them 
as long as God's hand is in it. Ooh, everything is going to be all right. Y'all that look dead ain't no party for y'all. Get somebody else in and say as long as God's hand is in it. Everything is going to be all right. God puts his hand in it. Wow, God puts his hands in it. God does something for the woman that he's about to do for some of you. He said, once my hand gets involved, you will never run out of oil. Uh, Lord, you will never run out of meal. Yes, Lord, uh, get somebody's hand and tell them uh, you're in a season of overflow. Tell them everything that you've been hurt for is about to work in your favor. For we know that all things work together for the good to them who love the law. My question tonight is do you love the law? I love the law. He heard my cry and he pitied my every groan. Long as I live and trouble rise. Grab somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I got a little glory. You got a little hallelujah. You got a little thank you, Jesus. Let's put it in the same pot and let's stir it up. Well, while we're stirring it up, God's about to set the temperature on 375 and he's going to put our praise in the fire. Something's gonna start rising. You better tell your neighbor whatever was flat, God's about to make it rise. I see promotions in your life tonight. I see joy in your life tonight. I see power in your life tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, all you have to do is help me praise him. And when my cake comes out the oven, I'm going to give you a slice of it. Because what God does for me, he's about to do the same for you. Get somebody's hand and let's have a little more church and say, In the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. You didn't tell him like you meant it. Say it one more time. Late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn Till it comes together Turn it Till it all makes sense And when I come out of this All I want to hear the Lord say Is well done Look at your neighbor And tell him it's already done Don't wait till the battle's over But make up in your mind You're gonna shout right now Say glory. Grab somebody else. 
else, make it a new person, say neighbor. What I like about this is God's about to bless me and it ain't even my birthday. He's about to celebrate me because I was at a point of death. I wanted to give up. I wanted to throw in the towel. But I heard the Holy Ghost say two words to my spirit. Hold on. You ought to tell your neighbor, hold on just a little while longer. These heavy burdens, they will soon pass over. Run your race. Keep your faith in God's own time. If you believe your season is right around the corner, clap your hands and say, yeah! Yes! Yeah! Hold on, my Shandai. Go, Baba. Say, go, Tebedi, O Shandai. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Shammai. Holy Ghost. You ought to call him Holy Ghost. Bishop, I prepare to close prophetically. Give me a little more game, please. The boy. Thank you, Jesus. The boy does not eat that night. I'm closing three things, but I'm going to dance on one. The boy also does not complain that the prophet's eating first. It looks like God is taking food out of a baby's mouth. First prophecy, then two left, but you got to scream loud. Is everyone that took what you needed and invested it in a church or a ministry? God said, I'm about to flood your house. I'm about to show you something. Because right now, the only way the churches was making it was by the sacrificial, faithful giving of others that are in line for a miracle. Your giving is about to tap in. Not because of what you do today, for what you've been doing for years. Look at somebody and tell them, listen, Bishop, you know I eat Chinese food. I met you one day at a Chinese restaurant. We went, and I thought they knew me, and they said hello to you. <laughs> Lady said, Dr. Ho oh, Bishop. I said, well, that's that. This, I thought I was taking them somewhere. Chinese people, look at me. They are funny. Talk. They will act like they don't know what we say. You'd be like, shrimp fried rice, extra eggs. You want chicken fried rice? No. Shrimp. Oh, shrimp. -a. No eggs? No, extra egg. But what they don't get wrong is the money amount. If you talk, I'm going to hunt you down. They say 38.15, but when they write it, it looks like 13.15. You'd be like, oh, no, that's the eight. But they talk. In a way where those who they don't actually like, they use more of their accent. But when it comes to money, y'all missing it. They're very clear. I need five more cent. People are like, can't you know no five cent? I'm going to say this, and if 50 of you catch it, no music, and for 30 seconds, your praise is real and loud. I guarantee you that by the end of mid-July, after the 6th, you're going to start cashing in. The Lord told me to treat you like the Chinese folk treat me. No, listen, I'm going to put some words together. When I do, I'm going to say them quickly. Together, they are powerful. Separately, they mean nothing.
Like a handful of meal, little cruise of oil, you cannot see cake until it comes together. You have to hear these words not separate, but as one. And I'm going to say them as one, but they're three separate words. When I say it, your behavior will determine whether you get it. The Lord said, when I bless you, I'm going to do it in one lump sum. One lump sum. You want a one lump sum? One lump sum. Some of you that were getting nothing for years, you're going to get it all at one time. One lump sum. Only the slow folk didn't catch it. What's one lump sum? Last thing I want to say. As I did this morning, glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. I see miracles. Who's your mother? Where is your mother? That's your son? Your son just screamed so loud, I don't know how this is going to work. But God said, tell her, I'm giving her eight years back pay. God says, and when I make this person do it, they're doing it in one lump sum. And let me say this to 35 women. You don't want, you don't have to want him. Take the money, Annie Mae. Take the cake. One last thing. Are you holding the hand of a debt free child of God for at least 30 seconds? What's your name? Anthony Taylor. Can I ask you something and be wise with my question? Have you ever had a negative record on you at any time? I want to say something to you. I need you to be careful who you drive with. Now, last time I prophesied, I can't remember, it was a young man way over there about some gang and his life was spared from a shooting. Last time I preached, Chloe was not here with a K. Chloe Drew was not present at that time. I want to say to you that God says when you take your praise to a new level today, even if it's for 60 seconds, God said you will never know what homelessness is another day in your life. And God's going to choose your friends for you and somebody with a loud mouth ought to help him. Every prophecy I'm given, see it as a cake coming out of the oven. You've already been beat and mixed. You've been stirred. You've already been locked in with the pressure. Time to come out and show people what you're made of. Last thing. Did you hold that hand for 30 seconds? I'm sorry, I made you release it because I started prophesying. Somebody shout glory be to God. That son of yours is very special. Keep him protected. I'm going to ask God to protect him in a way he may not want. And I'm going to ask God to do it as a miracle because he can't do it in no other way. He puts his hands up right away. That's crazy. The Lord told me. Now you got to remember that the story is about a woman and her son. Who's going through a famine. Y'all ain't talking. Who's holding a conversation with a prophet. I want to say to you, God said the best way he can help your son is by doing something for you that he actually couldn't do without money or special paper. So the Lord said, tell you this, even though he just blessed you and 200 of us will jump. God said, give him a few months and he'll move you to the house where the school is. Y'all I knew it. I knew it. You have to tell me. That's a lazy praise.
Those are not fake tears. How much power, I don't know how to ask the question, how much power does he have with you? Quite a bit. Quite a bit? So can I prophesy to him? I need I need to say two things. And God says, I need his excitement because the truth is, when I ask him jump and move, he's never was supposed to ever again. You were supposed to die in the street, but he asked God, don't kill him. You did. God said, I didn't honor his life at the time. I honored your request. You told God it ain't time. He, tr- he, 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 um, he trusts you enough that I'm going to tell you this and you can talk with him about it because he's our leader. But God said, if that young man praises me right now, tell him, even in temporary pain in and out, tell him, I'm going to bless him so much in Flint that he's going to get 20 acres of property. I'm going to show him. If y'all help him, I'll be okay. Last but not least, because y'all are messing up my meal to eat with the bishop. The last thing I want to tell you is for three and a half years, Dr. Clark preached this better than I because you can. For three and a half years, look at me, this woman is living off a cake. God is giving her a business that everybody needs some of. He made her rich by giving her what everyone else wanted to pay for. Only thing God has to do to turn you around is give you something that everyone needs and make you sell it at a high price to your enemies. Nope, you didn't catch it. I'm done. So I'll finish with you. Nope, nope, you missed it. All God has to do is make there be a famine of something that he gives you an idea to fulfill that need and let you put a price on that thing and charge your enemies full price. I'm laughing because God said every time he takes you up, he takes him too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to leave that alone for a, diff- a different conversation. Here is what I want to tell them. The cake comes out after three and a half years. The famine's over. She makes no more cake either. One It is believed that she saved enough in three and a half years not to work anymore. You missed that too. But here's the bigger story, and this is where I would have danced for about 30 of you who will catch it. When her cake business dried up and she took care of Elijah and it began to rain, Elijah's about to leave her premises because her cake is only staying miracle baked as long as he's there. Hold on. As long as you've always got someone in your spirit you want to bless, you're going to keep making cake. Elijah says, it's my time to go. This is where my dance was. While he's walking out the door, her son dies. He dies. See, somebody read it. Elijah now refuses to leave the house because he said, ain't no way you're going to let somebody take care of me and kill them. What Elijah did is where the scream should be loud and we're closing, but you got to be loud. Elijah did to her son what she did to cake. He put him in a room and shut the door. Uh Uh-oh, hold on. 
and basically commanded what was dead to rise. Oh, Elijah used the same method as the woman. Said everything you gave me had to go through this process. Took it from her. Put it in the room. I'm closing. Laid it on the bed. Got back up. Put his hands in it. Put his face on it. The child coughed. <laughs> this little boy just got up and he gave it back to the mother. And she said, basically, I left you with no money. I'm going to scream, but I left you in your house with the power to resurrect. All of you, after today, God will be in your house resurrecting things that died on you. He's going to resurrect marriages, resurrect health. You're, you're holding the hand of someone that you want blessed. I want to say to you, Bishop, because I said I was going to hold it for another conversation, but the Lord said, no, you chose that. That's not what I told you. So I'm going to give you the condensed version. A thousand of us will scream for you if they're serious. God says, tell you, the year to come in your position, said, tell him I'm leaving him there so that the church will rise. I'm trying to be so. God said the church of God in Christ for the past few years have been in the oven. I've had them under a certain temperature. Waiting for a voice that would come and call my name. That would cause me to bring them out in a way where they can be reserved to the masses. The Lord said, you are in the bakery department better known as, I hope somebody scream, you are God's icing on the cake. God said, every leader before you was an ingredient. He said, but I brought you in as the icing because I'm ready to recelebrate this church you don't put I'm closing prophesying to our leader for those who will scream because you know bacon scream on this you can't put icing on the cake until everything cools off God said the church is too hot right now but in 30 days I'm going to make everything cool Each person that falls in line with the will of God, give them a slice of the cake. Those who don't, let them fight over the bowl. But God said, my son, I brought you to fulfill what the fathers began. I want you to let me spread you like icing on a cake. I, 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 I. Last thing, and I mean last thing, look at me. I told you Elijah was ready to give up. But God said, go to sleep. And he baked him a cake and said, eat it and go in the strength thereof. The Lord told me to tell you it like this. And I need 200 of you to not play. The Lord said, tell you, when I do what I'm going to do this year, moving into next year, he said, the best way when a person is of age celebrates, tell Bishop Sheard, I'm going to put a candle on the cake, make a wish, and blow out the candle. You make a wish. That's why I was going to preach your wish. 
is at my command. This is the last time you will touch that person prophetically unless y'all got something to put in each other's life after this. Glory be to God. Where is your husband? All right, fine. Because... I just wanted to respect him. I think he was here this, this morning. I want to say something to you. You can give it to him if he's not watching. This is how the Lord words it to me. He said, give it to her. Tell us on her to praise him. Ten of you will go crazy for her. But the Lord says, I've been putting you through private tests for over 22 years. God said, I've always been there when they've needed me. He said, but tell her. From last year to this year, the heart, the sincerity that she's had towards certain women who were flat and would have never risen to the top because she continues to breathe life into those who have been divorced, wounded, hurt, abused, and battered. Tell her, by this time next year, for fun, I'm going to make her totally debt-free. The Lord said, tell her what? This includes picking out the house you wanted in a certain town. God said, don't look at prices no more. God said, watch my hand. He's going to put your hand in it. All right, I said last time, touch someone, be happy for them. Young man, what's your name? And how old are you? You know, Caleb, I just prophesied to another Caleb this morning. I think that was his name. Because I can't. Oh, there he goes. That man right there, Caleb. I just prophesied to him. And uh, I want to say to you, young man, you may not do it because you have an old spirit. Okay, I don't know. But I'm going to have you run to the middle of the floor when I tell you. And there you will dance with no music, even if it's for 20 seconds. God said he got a choice, but one of the choices can lead to all the choices. Tell him, number one, I know that I've called him to be a prophet of God. I know that I've called him to be a preacher for the future. I know that he eats preaching morning, noon, and night. That you watch certain people you like, and I think I'm one of them, and I'm so glad. But the Lord said, when you get to the center, I'll know this. God says, tell him, I can give him over 60 grand for college and make him the campus pastor. With... Are y'all happy or you're not? That's obedience. All right, at the count of three, I'm going to ask all of you to praise God for a span of one minute. That's it. One minute. That's it. One minute. That's it. Hey, Kiara, can you act? There's a movie. They're going to call you, be humble, but tell them you need some more money. Up front. The Lord says, 
Start an account in your daughter's name, like a LLC, like a trust fund. Because God said, the new money that's coming, your bank will not hold it. I need to put it where it can't be touched. Y'all ain't talking. All right, y'all don't have to believe me. Don't, you know. Try to trademark her name like other people did because of the way you spelled it. Jay-Z did it for his babies. Them crazy Kardashians did it for their children. And you can do it for yours. Because there's a clothing line coming out in her name. And what you don't know is this infant wear. Now, I'm creating millionaires. That's all I'm doing. At the count of three, your hands, your feet, your mouth. Lady in the black that just went like this, how old are you? 40. Now, how long, you don't have to be deep, how long were the children in Israel in the wilderness? 40 years. How long did Jesus fast being tempted by the devil? 40 days. God says, on tomorrow, all of your temptings, all of your tests and trials are over. God says, whatever you want, ask him. Y'all ain't talking. And y'all are laughing. Do you know her? Do y'all know her? What church are you from? His church? All right, because I was asking, did y'all know her? Because in one year, you are. That's one of the greatest evangelists in this building right now. In this entire building. And if the bishop says yes, God said, I stole your youth from me, but from you, but I'm about to give it back. Hallelujah. I needed to separate you from the others. Yeah. All right, count of three. Get ready. I didn't let y'all jump, scream, or shout. Because grandma taught for two focal scream up here. If the oven, if the cake is in the oven, don't jump. Because if you jump before time, what's in it will fall. And she said, don't slam that door. Y'all, I'm having y'all jump, scream, and praise because what's in the oven is done. It went in liquid, but it's coming out solid. Y'all, y'all get ready there. At the count of three. I love him. He not bothering y'all. That's called preheat oven. Count of three. Hold on, one more. Man in the glasses, bald headed, black shirt on. Who's the lady to your right? Your wife? The Lord says, the reason why he's going to correct your money and job issue is because of her. God says, what he's about to do for you is going to make up for seven years of what wasn't done. And somebody ought to scream for them in that section. You said Monica? Monica. Okay, count of three. You will have 60 seconds. You don't have time to warm up. You got to go right in. To praise God for what is done. And for the next three and a half years, God says, I'm going to make sure you have overflow. You got 60 seconds. One, two, one, two, three.
on the hit the guitar. Cause y'all already, y'all already got me in trouble. So this is for you. Anyone that actually needs a miracle before the 6th of July. If you can find someone who will not refuse you and dance with you. God says, I will create the quickest cake you ever ate in all your life. You got 30 seconds to get it and y'all got to come on right to me. When the music stops, is there a voice? All of you that are watching on streaming tonight, do you have a voice? 
Let the redeemed of the Lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bow your heads and close your eyes under the mandate of the Holy Ghost. Don't play, but oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know. Look at the altar full of people. He touched me. And he made me whole. Yakoto Ramansai. Don't hold back because of a person. Rababando shelemakasi andai. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. That's the sound I hear. Abundance. As your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. You that are watching online, pay close attention tonight. Bishop has never asked me to come and preach and or ever mentioned me raising any funds for anything. He's a man concerned about the people. But tonight... The Holy Ghost, and I want you to close your eyes. Let them stay at the altar. It's full. That's how we used to do it. The Lord said to me, Todd, you kept saying 20, 22 people would be millionaires, including yourself. And I said, yeah. Yeah. He said, tell the 20 people, he said, because I've blessed several of them with lots of money that they do not touch. He said, tell them they may not want to touch it, but I want to. He said, you tell the candidates that believe by faith that they're becoming millionaires to sow $400 tonight. Now, I've got mine in my pocket. I have more than that, but I didn't think it was going to be for offering." But the Lord said, tell them, if they bake me a cake first, I'll give them a business. All I'm asking for is my slice. If you that God has blessed to be financially able, capable, and stable, do what I tell you to do tonight, you will ask Bishop, Bring him back to tell us what to do with the overflow. Because some of us are ready for wealth, but we're not ready to manage it. You go from getting it to learning how to keep it. Let me say it again for the millionaires who didn't say nothing. You go from getting it, acquiring it, to learn how to keep it, to accumulate it. You won't work twice for what you get once. You will work once and it will get you more and more and more. There will be 22 of us that will get this. I know he's tired, but I've got the ex-bishop to come stand in front of his people one more time. 
Normally I would do it, but God said I cannot. This is the house of the prelate. When you bring it, and three of you are going to bring it, and you're actually broke, I would normally tell you, don't do that. But tonight the Lord said, refuse no one whose faith is in full operation, because tell them I'm about to pull the cake out of the oven. If you're one of them given the 400, come stand at the altar right now in front of our bishop. Watch God. If you are online and you claim you want a business or you have one that is not working for you, it is taking more out of your pocket than it has ever put in there, I ask you to get with us tonight. If you do that, you will see the hand of God, 400 of you. If you do that, you will see the hand of God mightily upon your life. Only people leave them there until they're ready to get up. The only people that's doing this right now are those who know by faith God has something in you that he's allowed life to beat it out of you. And now he's going to whip it into something that you'll be able to sell for the rest of your life. Repeat after me, all of you that have voices, I'll never be broke another day in my life. I've got one woman in here mad at me because I have not prophesied to her. I'm not your psychic friend. No one has enough money to make God talk. Once we sell it, we work for the other party. If you would have talked to him, he'd have talked to you. The airport, anybody in here work at the air? Airport? Who's James? Hey, somebody screaming for you. Who's James? All right, man, say something. You hear somebody screaming for you? How you so quiet with somebody saying James does? Who is that? What now? All right, whatever y'all say, whatever, however y'all want to identify. Because she's screaming, the Lord says, tell you, you need to reapply for the position you wanted. Because God said he's about to give you five more thousand dollars a year on your salary and somebody with a loud mouth ought to shout yes. The Lord also said, tell you, you will play the drums, the keys, and the bass guitar. God says, I'm going to put music in all of your skeleton structure where one day you will never work a labor job another day in your life. And somebody that's not jealous, scream again. How old is your daughter? 16 because she screamed the Lord says instead of y'all trying to help her God says I'm gonna let her qualify for every school she files for God says and I will protect her from all danger and all harm God said y'all can't keep arguing about where she going now listen She on the floor. That's your daughter. When these individuals, there are four more that should have been up here by now. Two of you are not 100% in your mil military benefits. You wanted it, but because you're still being stingy, you will not qualify. If you got that 100%, you would make way, way more than $400. Somebody shout yes. Yes, yes one more time. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 of you jump on this and me and these young people scream for you. But God says, I'm going to create a law where all school teachers will get raises and promotions on your job.
Now, Bishop, you heard it out of my mouth. It's on tape. I said, God said he's going to make it a written law. Sir, over there smiling at me, laughing at me. I don't know whether you're being funny or you just smile for a living. But God said, tell him I was going to give him his own thriving business again on a day. I don't know what's going on where you were singing a Walter Hawkins song. Do you sing? Uh, Stand up while I'm talking to you. Oh, two of you stood up. I'm talking to the one who was laughing at me. He got that blue suit on. Where do you sing? You sing here? What's the last Hawkins song you sang? Huh? Oh, that I feel deep inside. Keeps on set my soul. That's a good song. If I told you that God was creating some kind of new condo for you, would you believe me? Would you like one? You want to pay full price? Oh, okay, you're in your right mind. Now, I want to make sure. I'm going to have 10 of you praise God for him, but God says, tell you this. This is where the deep part comes. Tell him, I'm going to do it if he prays me, but there will be no roommate. Are y'all praising God for him? When y'all tap the altar, which will be a symbol of laying your gift at the apostles' feet, I just want you to say millions. Look at me. Some of you are going to be very mystified as I was when God gave me a certain number and I never knew I had it until my bank called me. I was so busy hustling that I didn't count nothing. I was just working. But God's about to turn your work into play. Where you're going to be making money doing what you like to do. Come on, tap it and say millions. Will y'all clap for these people? I said, will y'all clap for these people? Here's what's shocking to me. I normally hear the Holy Ghost ask for another number than a third number. And most folk get upset with me on that, but that's the way God uses me. But the Lord said, tell the rest of the church and them online that I want 90% of those left to sow $40. You are going to come out of your financial struggle. Don't move yet. I said 90%. That means if you have three bundles of weave in your hair, And you know how much a cheap bundle costs. Do not have long hair and short money. It's time for God not to grow our hair, but to grow our inheritance. Somebody shout yes. Woman that just clapped with the blue or black and white on stand. You look. I know God is good to you. Somebody happy for you. You know them? It's your church family because they're excited about you. I didn't see you in the line. I don't see as much anyway, but the Lord said, she's a millionaire. God says, I got to give her back what she lost for 18 years. Y'all ain't God said, tell her I need her tonight to get her joy back. I need her to stop thinking about things that have already passed. It's gone. It's not coming back. God says, I have called her to be a prayer warrior, but she's still being a prayer warrior. Tell her, loose it, because I'm about to bless her like she's never been blessed in all of her life. And somebody that's not biased or jealous ought to shout yes.
Have you been on a plane ever? How many times you think? Seven or eight. If I told you that there are 50 tickets over your head, that everything you do that's about to generate money is going to take a flight. God says, tell you, you must get over your past. You must not talk to me about any male, any relationship, anything. And I know you're hearing me. And I'm being real uh, strategic in this, getting in trouble, taking more time than I'm supposed to because your situation is urgent. God says she cannot come to me about relationships, hurt, pain, who did what or that. Tell her for the next few months, think about business. Think about flights. Think about, I can't say that either. But think about how God's going to take care of whatever has your name on it. God says, tell her, I'm going to bless her to live in two cities. One to get away from the pain. The other to show the devil he's a liar. Y'all it. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to clap your hands and shout yes. I'm strategic enough as a prophet not to tell everything I see. But if God is saying something good to you and you know something bad should happen, you ought to worship him automatically. I need 200 of you, not one, two, to get the $40. You that are online. If you hold back tonight, you have just lost it by forfeit and default. All of you that hold this, please, y'all make me spend money eating at Coney Island today. Bishop was going to take me to a steak place, but I want to go get a nap. I don't see the hype yet, but I do see the hype with the house of pancakes. That old-fashioned house of pancakes. All right, I'm going to leave that. That's anointed by God. The Coney Island, we can go back and forth. Now. I want all of you that's going to do it, that didn't plan on doing it, to just do it. Especially men. Cheap men make abusive husbands. Cheap women should never get married. Hey, hey, how's your, how's your license? Got to ask you a question. If I told you to run slowly right now, because God's about to open your business. You can... You're going to have a business that's going to skyrocket to where everyone, even in the secular industry, is going to buy into your product. And because y'all are so disconnected from wealth. He didn't have to give $400 for this. We don't pay for prophecies. This is how church used to be. If I were to tell you all of it, you would want to be his friend. But son, God's about to bless you like never before. I need to see it. You that are going to give the 40, come stand at the altar right now. There needs to be 200 of you moving quick, fast, and in a hurry. You that are online, I need you to do the same. Look at these obedient people. What's your name in orange? Tiffany? I don't even understand why I'm doing this. Let me ask something else. Who's your family? Where are they? That's who I want. What's your mama's name? Yvonne. Yvonne, wave. All right, you don't have to come up. All right. I was watching you, and the Lord said, tell her, don't get mad at you, but if it was another prophet, she'd walk off laughing and be like, get out of here. But the Lord said, she trusts you. The Lord said, tell her. There are not too many men created that could put up with you. God said, but I just put the icing on one. And your mama going to have to get used to not seeing you. Y'all ain't just got to get used to it.
When you all come, you can tap the altar. You that are coming can tap the altar. It will be your way of paying homage to God by giving the prophet a piece of cake first. In the old school, cake was money. In the old, old school, cheese and cheddar was better. In the new school, it's called the bag. Yeah. All right. All of these were nicknames for money. Where's your daughter? Where is she? She's at home probably. I need you to do something for me. I need you to take your phone, text her, write the words I'm about to tell you, and I don't know why I'm telling you to write this. I don't know what's going to happen. But God says for you to tell her that no matter where she is, if she gets a love and obedience to shout hallelujah seven times right now, I got a key to some locked doors. Y'all ain't talking to me. God says, I'm going to open the door that the law said would never be open a day in this life. God said, before I give anyone back, tell her, come back. Lift it in your right hand, your devices, your cash, whatever you have. You that are online, come on now, respond, because you missed this. It won't come back to you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I need you to take this handful of meal and this little cruise of oil and teach these people how to make cake. Let them work and make money doing what they love to do. Let them make money in their sleep. See, you that are talking, I'm telling you, you that ain't, forfeit. Let them dream it and wake up and actually be doing what they dreamed of. And God, make the rest of this year called 2024 a year of the miraculous. In Jesus' name.